In a good spray pattern, the paint or material sprayed is completely and evenly distributed onto the surface. In this video, we'll cover several techniques you can use to ensure a quality finish. In this section, we will discuss spray patterns, spray techniques. Before starting your project, if you don't have a lot of experience with spraying, use some scraps of cardboard to test the quality of the spray pattern. You could spray a large flat area, like the side of a house, that's not easily seen. Or you can practice with water. Just make sure you let the surface dry completely before applying your paint. As you're practicing, start at the minimum spray pressure and slowly increase the pressure until a good spray pattern is achieved. This is a good spray pattern. Notice that there are no runs in the pattern and that the pattern itself is smooth and even. If your pattern has what are known as fingers or tails, an uneven finish, such as this, then the pressure should be increased. Spraying at the lowest pressure possible while still getting a good spray pattern will save wear and tear on your pump and spray tip and reduce overspray. If you're at the maximum pressure setting and the spray pattern is still not suitable, a smaller tip hole size should be used or your material may need to be thinned. Follow the instructions on the back of your material container under spraying applications. The gun should be held approximately 12 inches from the surface and aimed straight at the surface. While moving vertically or horizontally, the gun should remain at a consistent distance from the surface. Fanning the gun to direct the spray at an angle causes an uneven finish. Flex your wrist at the beginning and end of each stroke to maintain an even coat. Don't spray at an angle. Keep the gun perpendicular to the surface. To practice proper gun positioning without spraying, try moving the gun and holding it perpendicular to the surface only about two inches from the wall. Notice how at the beginning and end of each stroke, you'll flex your wrist to keep the gun square to the surface. Move out to 12 inches for additional practice. Work in sections only as far as you can comfortably reach. First, spray the outer edges and cut in any corners. Then, aim the gun at the edge of the previous spray pass so the spray pattern is actually overlapping each pass by one half. Trigger the gun after starting each spray pass and release before ending the spray pass. Your arm should be moving when the trigger is pulled and released. This will create a nice fuzzy edge around the entire spray pattern so your next pass will blend into the previous pass. Rotating the guard changes the pattern to either vertical or horizontal orientations. When spraying on broad open surfaces, such as ceilings and bare walls, the outside edges should be sprayed first, then the middle can be sprayed more quickly. For vertical corners, turn your guard so the spray tip is on the top and aim your gun into the corner. Spray along the corner, applying an even amount of material along both sides. Typically when painting, it's best to start at the top and work your way down. Begin by spraying any eaves or the underside of overhangs. The direction you spray is determined by the construction. As a general rule, spray horizontal and make sure you direct the spray up a little to spray the bottom lip of your siding. With a little practice, this easy to use sprayer will have you spraying like a pro in no time. Remember, point the gun straight at the wall without tilting up or down or angling left or right. Start moving the gun before and after you trigger. Move at a consistent speed, and when spraying, overlap the prior spray pass by 50%. Allow enough time for paint to dry before removing tape from your trim. This will result in crisp, clean lines. 